Uh, welcome to Mutiny. I am Rachel. I got strong-armed into doing the opening today. <laughs> but as I'm the only cast member here, but I also have Jason, our GM, our would-be GM, if we were doing yeah. normal. And I'm not, I'm not GMing tonight. Not GMing tonight. No authority here. Uh, and we also have uh, Jeff, the voice of Harold. Yes, hello. Great to be and, here. Thanks for having me on. Yeah. Thanks for coming. I suppose what we normally do is let you plug your uh, podcast when you are guest for us. If you want to let us know about what you do? Yeah, thanks. <laughs> so I am a player on... Pot Against the Machine, uh, Pathfinder 1E actual play. It's the sci-fi AP of the fantasy game. That's how people kind of know it if they're familiar with Iron Gods. Every Wednesday, we have a what I would call a not like overwhelming backlog, but still, it's, it's a little bit of a commitment to catch up. I'd say it's worth it. I'm a little biased, but episode, you know, over 100 episodes so far uh, of quality. We're almost finished with book one. I'm just kidding. Uh, But yeah, thanks for having me. Awesome. Yeah. So I'm going to start off today by saying spoilers, spoilers uh, for everyone, because we are talking about our bucket list uh, APs or modules that we both want to run or want to play in. And I'm going to kick us off because, uh, as Jeff said, he's running Iron Gods, right? Or running in Iron Gods right now, which brings us to one of my first bucket list modules, or modules as we called them, First Ed D&D uh, Barrier Peaks, which is also uh, sci-fi dropped into a fantasy setting. Um, if I have not played it and I have kept it mostly spoiler free for myself but um i was just discussing with my dad today who was my first gm and he was telling me that barrier peaks was gygax's attempt to draw people into his uh, sci-fi setting uh which had mixed results (laughs) so i don't know if either of you have heard of that one i feel like it's pretty well known yeah expedition to the barrier peaks that's right yes yeah this is s3 yeah yeah s3 this is yeah i've i i've only i only know it by name and i know it because it's gygax but Mm -hmm. i've not actually played it i don't know anybody who's played it so i've only like i said only really know it by name and the fact that it's yeah it's basically sci-fi kind of dropped into a fantasy setting which is the very similar to the theme of iron gods where it's just a spaceship dropped into a fantasy land mm-hmm. so yeah At barrier peaks you get a slow my understanding is you slowly run into things that you don't understand and gradually come to a realization that it's alien out of this world tech uh, rather than fantasy stuff so it's very exciting one day yeah so a quick synopsis here says that um, the party goes to this duchy that is under constant attack by monsters emerging from a cave and the grand duke hires the adventurers to discover the origins of the creatures and stop the, these incursions, which the PCs eventually find out that the cave is actually the entrance to a spacecraft yeah. that has been downed and been there for years. Mm. Sounds very familiar, Jeff. You know, I'm starting to have my suspicions that there may have been an influence. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I kind of, I kind of want to pick Sam's brain now and see if there, if there is any kind of like forward or back matter, where they talk about the influence of potentially this module, on on the AP itself. I mean, it certainly wouldn't be the first Pathfinder AP to do more than a 
a hat tip like Giant Slayer. Right. What's that a hat tip to? Is it to the giant modules from First Ed D&D? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> no. That's my ultimate bucket list one. I've oh, started no. that adventure path, so to speak, three times in my life and never made it through the first installment. So if I play one adventure all the way through, it would be, what is it called? The GDQ series. Uh, that's, I want to play it so bad. So that's Giants, which then leads into Drow, which is actually the first time that Drow are ever introduced into D&D &D, ever. Uh, which is pretty cool, because then you get all into the Drizzt series and Drow become really popular and it all started with the giant modules. So, And that's that's a perfect segue, because if we're going to talk about some AD&D modules that yours truly wants to play, Queen of the Spiders is right up there. Yeah, that's in that series. Or that exactly. is that series, yeah. Yeah. Queen of the Spiders is is probably the one that I, I've wanted to play for the longest and, and the most it's yeah it's this is the yeah it's it's where it's where the uh, demonic goddess Lolf was introduced and the underdark and you know it's the drow and that's where it all came from and if you look at the cover of Queen of the Spiders. It is the most like 1980s heavy metal magazine type cover uh, mm -hmm. that you could that you could imagine. It's yeah, that's that's the one I've there are two AD and D first edition modules that I wanna I've, I wanna play, but Queen of the Spiders is number one. And yeah. it's the it's the one I've been wanting to play for a long, long time. And that was big enough. They reprinted those right in a later edition they, i believe so yeah i yeah. believe they they were they were redone for three, yeah the 30th five. anniversary of D, D. that's right that's what it was for okay i have to know what's your other what's your other ADD? &D? desert of desolation that's the the pyramids the the pharaoh series i3 i4 and i5 by tracy and laura hickman Okay, authors of Dragonlance. Yeah, so it's yeah. Pharaoh, Pharaoh, Oasis of the White Palm, and Lost Tomb of Martek. It's the um, that's the again hat tip to one of the Pathfinder APs is a huge hat tip to this trilogy that I'm currently finally playing in. It's a play by post that Jeff is actually running, uh, Mummy's Mask. He's he's running us running me through that, uh, but yeah, this is the your Egyptian style trap filled pyramid expedition where you're fight facing mummies and you got mummy rot and um yeah a, the a millennia dead wizard and yeah it's it's classic. Have, have you have you played that one, Rachel? I haven't played that one. I don't think that one was on my radar. I know I've seen it, um, but the big puzzle one that was on my list was Tomb of Horrors, which is a guy mm -hmm. again, a guy Gax. But that is just the. I mean, I think he literally wrote it just to mess with his players. Like, yeah, yeah. You can't do anything. Um, There's. There's no way to actually survive Tomb of Horrors unless you actually know <laughs> Tomb right. of Horrors. Yes, and like it is. It's impossible to go in there blind and not and and survive it. You have to know Tomb of Horrors. Like it's. it's I, I've run Tomb of traps. I've run Tomb of Horrors a few times, converted and updated for different editions. A handful of times I've run it and. Every time I've run it, I tell people bring five characters. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Just yeah, bring five characters with you. Nice old school feel. Yeah, I want to run that one because I don't like riddles and puzzles, but I want to. I I may or may not like killing players. I have a reputation, but the characters or the players themselves? Because I'm nervous. I mean, 
it depends how much they cross the line, right? Like, they're gonna be real smart asses. Her brother-in-law Casey is still alive, so <laughs> I've been playing with him for many years. Yeah. Uh... What about you, Jeff? Do you have any old-school AD and D adventures that you've always wanted to run? I I don't. I now that's because of my ignorance, not because I'm like I don't want to play any of those. It's more like you guys are listing stuff off. I'm like, oh, that sounds really cool. I just I never really looked at the uh, AD and D OSR any of those. What edition I just, did you I came in, come in on? Oh. So I came in. Well, I had a I had a slight dip in three five, and then didn't really play anything Wizards uh, until. Well, in the last handful of years, sure. I just I just played other other systems, but of Star Trek and White Wolf, and I have a lot of D10s from my undergrad days, uh, and then and then yeah, I got into PF One and the Paizo family of products within the last uh, six years. Nice. So much content there. Uh, I just never really looked elsewhere. For sure. There's a ton of stuff. There's a ton of stuff. <clears throat> well, that's a good segue because there are there is one third edition, and I'm just lumping third and 3.5 together. Uh, there is a third edition adventure that I've wanted to play. And it's actually one that I am considering at some point in time, converting to second edition Pathfinder and plopping it in Galarian proper. This is a 128 page adventure module that takes you from sixth level to 12th level. It's, gen- it's a generic D and D adventure that you can kind of you can kind of plop it in anywhere, and it's written by none other than Richard Baker and James Jacobs for three third edition Dungeons and Dragons. This is called the Red Hand of Doom. Let me read you the 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 back of the 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 like back of the book plot summary. The Red Hand of Doom follows a group of adventurers who have entered the Elsir Vale, a thinly populated frontier region. The party discovers a massive hobgoblin horde that is fanatically devoted to the dark goddess Tiamat and led by a charismatic half-dragon warlord, Azure Kull. To stop the horde, the players players have to muster the inhabitants of the Vale, battle hobgoblins, giants, and dragons, and defeat an overwhelming enemy. Nice. Sounds so like a good the, classic. Yeah, exactly. It's, mm-hmm. it's, it's, this is, I guess, your classic straight-up D&D adventure. And it's written by James Jacobs and Richard Baker. So this is one that I've, I've always wanted to play. I never got a chance to play in 3rd edition and 3.5. But, um... That's 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 been on my bucket list for a while, and to the point where I think I might actually just you know bite the bullet and rather than play it, just convert it to, just take the themes and convert it to second edition. Would you keep that level range? Because that's a really sweet kind of that caught my attention more than anything else. Was like ooh six to twelve. That's fun. Yeah, you know I there's a group of short small sized green skinned anti-heroes whose shenanigans kind of end right around level 6 I don't know maybe we'll see Hmm. might have to weasel my way back into that side project (laughs) can I oust (laughs) yeah because I mean after those goblin adventures is not a whole lot so but this kind of picks up right where 
it leaves off. So we'll see. But yeah, that's on that's on the list. That's something that I've wanted to play for a while. So yeah, it's it's this is one that's been pretty well received by the community when it came out. Critical reception was really really high, and it's one that's listed as one of the best third edition advent pre written adventures. Yeah, right up there. They say right. One reviewer says it. Favor it compares favorably with Temple of Elemental Evil and Keep on the Borderlands. Hmm. Okay. So I was just looking at Temple of Elemental Evil, deciding whether or not to include it on my list today, but didn't make the cut. Didn't make the cut. Did not. No. All right. So any other third edition? I didn't play. Third three. Okay. I'm excited to hear about you guys' Pathfinder ones because I, despite playing for several years, have no knowledge of anything that I haven't played. So, yeah, I did. I didn't know if you want if you look through the list and any of them stuck out to you. Like, ooh, I that glanced, sounds really cool. But I mostly noticed how, like we mentioned, how many of them I was like, huh, that sounds like a first ed D and D thing, or a D and D thing. Uh, so that was the thing that stuck out to me. It was very distracting, but yeah. Well, before we, before Jeff and I start waxing poetic on Pathfinder Adventure Paths, was there anything else you wanted to, that was on your bucket list? You know, those were my three bucket lists. Me and my dad and my brother-in-law, Casey, that Jason mentioned, had a pact with each other that we would each run one of those three Barrier Peaks Tomb of Horrors and the uh, Queen of Spiders. And then, you know, we had children. Not my dad, I was already born. But so that never happened. But those were the three that we were going to rotate jamming and just play for 50 years. So, yeah. Nice. Yeah. Who was going to run what? I was going to run the Tomb of Horrors because I didn't like, you know, puzzles. puzzles and then and riddles. Yeah. yeah. My dad was going to run the, I call them the giant modules because I've known about them since I was 12 and that's what I called them. But uh, he was going to run that and actually did start us through them three times and we never got our feet going and that left Barrier Peaks for Casey, theoretically. Theoretically, okay. Theoretically. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Nice. You know, best laid plans. Coincidentally, 50 years is on the conservative side for how long it's going to take for us to finish the play-by-post of Mummy's Mask. (laughs) I try, Jeff. I try. Uh, You're doing great. (laughs) (laughs) And for any of the other players who are listening, yeah, take it personally. (laughs) (laughs) No, it's funny because you mentioned trying to run things a few times. And that is me trying to run Shattered Star. I think I've, with play by post and then a couple different, you know, a couple play by post and a roll 20, it's just scheduling and life. And that I've decided that I should no longer attempt to, to run that game because I just don't think it'll happen. I'm like, okay. <laughs> it's not that I was wild about it. It just, you know, got the whole, all six volumes with a humble bundle. I was like, I'll just run this doesn't cost me anything extra and then apparently just what's meant to be one day one day we're so all gonna far, have the time to just play non-stop so right mm-hmm. right when we when we when we get into that virtual reality retirement home yeah just upload my consciousness to uh pathfinder retirement home and we'll just <laughs> all play in in the metaverse Amazing. All right, so uh, Pathfinder First Edition. Should we move on to that? I had a couple of standalone modules that I've always wanted to play before we move on to the APs. Did you have any standalone modules in First Ed? Me? Or either? Either one. Oh, okay. You go ahead, Jeff. Oh, I was going to say. So you mentioned. Since you may never get to play something, you'll just probably end up GMing it as you know as it goes for us. Uh, and I had started GMing Dragon's Demand and that kind of 
uh, it similarly moved across the country, etc. cetera. Um, but that's one that I would love to either finish running or play in because it's just, it just seems so cool and fun. That was actually one of the, one of the two that's on my list. Oh, snap. For, for first edition, like standalone modules, Dragon's Demand is one of the two that I just I wanted to play. I mean, it's it's your classic dragon adventure, you know? Yeah. Cobalts, dragons, wizards. I mean, what more could you want? Fair. It's, it takes place under Karamaga. Yeah, I mean, it's sounds dope as hell. <laughs> Agreed. Oh, wait, no, no. Karamaga is the other one. Oh, Sorry. Yeah, no. yeah. No, this one's in... Valheim. Yes. Like yeah. in the middle of nowhere. Where you're like, your players shouldn't be familiar with this area. Okay. Yeah, and in, it introduced Gryoths as a, um, as a monster in first edition. Pathfinder. So, Gryoths are awesome, but uh, I kind of let I kind of let some spoilers slip about the uh, my my other one. It's uh, which takes place in in Karamaga, which is um, and if you bonus points if you figure this one out by just mentioning Karamaga. Um, the other standalone module that I've always wanted to play is the God's Mouth Heresy, which is a first level adventure. It's like a, it's a 32 page adventure um, by Rob McCreary. It's yeah, it's just a first level here. Let me read. Let me read you the, the back of the book text deep below the anarchic city of Karamaga. Someone or something has begun stealing corpses from the city's most prestigious tomb. The God's mouth ossuary fearing the worst. The clerics of Phrasma in charge of maintaining the crypts quietly call for aid not wanting to risk their own members in combating whatever horrors may have crept into the tunnels and hidden chambers of the legendary Undercity. Yet, when the PCs venture below the closed-off sections of the crypt, what they find may be more than they bargained for, for beneath the infamous crypt lies a temple from an ancient empire devoted to sin, and a former Phrasman cleric whose weathered his goddess's wrath to create an army of undead minions, their dead flesh standing ready to support his heretical plans. Mm. So, sir, it's a classic undead adventure. Nice. So, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's one of I wanted to play. And so it's, it's just a level one. It's just a level one adventure. It's, but yeah, it's for Asmon clerics, undead. Mm-hmm. Sign me up. <laughs> yeah, man. All right, should we get into some APs? Yes. Yes. This is this is your this is your realm as a f- first edition Pathfinder podcast player. Oh. oh. It, and as has been hinted at, it's it's a long list. There's what sixty or something. There's a bunch. There's- yeah, 24 first edition Pathfinder adventures, I think I counted. And one, two, three, four, eight, twelve, eleven second edition out right now. Um, yeah, so 35. Yeah. 35. I, when I say first edition, that includes the four 3.5 edition yeah, yeah. adventures. So. It's a lot. And, it is. A uh, lot. It is. It is a lot. And one of these days, one of my plans to, with dubious knowledge is to actually go through each one of these one by one and do a recap with some of the GMs who've actually run these. Oh wow! Ooh, yeah, just kind of just do an adventure recap. Just kind of the main beats in two hours. Tell me the main beats of the. Tell us the main beats of the story. So. Yeah. I have a, I have a, I picked out three that I've wanted to run. And I, if you know me and if you've been with 
around me in the podcast servers, you probably can know which ones I'm going to talk about. But is there one about dwarfs? <laughs> Not yet, which is That's why <laughs> that yeah. that one's coming out. <laughs> Not yet. And my I've been top itching. Guess. I've been itching for that one. But no, uh, I'm. Ex- I want. I want to hear Jeff's first. Or we can just bu- we can volley it back and forth if you have. Yeah, yeah, I have a couple. Uh, top of my list since I'm playing in Iron Gods and cross one off the bucket list, uh, which leaves then uh, Reign of Winter as my top one e AP. I would love to play. Just that another kind of cool clash of maybe maybe a little bit of time travel. Who could say? But just to. Mm-hmm. Just a cool. I, I I couldn't bring myself to listen to any actual plays of it because I just I want it to be as unspoiled as possible. I just want to play in it, which just seems really cool. Yeah, so it has like been cool. centuries since the immortal witch Baba Yaga last visited the world, and the hour draws nigh for her return. But when she fails to appear in the frozen realm of Irisen to usher in its newest ruler pockets of winter begin to grow throughout the inner sea after 1400 years of perpetual winter the icy curse of irison is spreading what links do these strange blizzards and swaths of wintry landscape have with irison and is there any truth to the growing rumors that the witch queen elvana has taken full control over the realm can her plans for the inner sea be thwarted or will the reign of winter engulf the world? Ooh. Sounds cool. I've never played a full campaign in winter mode or ice mode, tundra. Be like a whole new set of issues and rules and survival stuff to yeah. deal with. There is and this is this is this happens within the first five minutes of the adventure. So it's not really going to be a huge spoiler for Jeff. But the adventure starts in the middle of summer. And then all of a sudden, boom, you're in the middle of winter. And so you got to get that heavy winter clothing or you're dealing with severe cold. Yeah. And so that, that's the very first thing you deal with is severe cold. And which is not something you generally have to worry about in an adventure. It's like, like temperature and weather isn't normally a huge thing. I mean, it can be if you're like in your, in your, in a desert setting or something. Yeah. But usually you know that ahead of time and you can prepare for it. But here it's like, you're in the middle of summer and then bam, you got to deal with severe cold. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's I made a, a desert setting, a uh, homebrew in first said D and D a D and D and made my own rule set for extreme weather, but not, not winter. That'd be no. so fun. This is the uh, also the first Paizo product featuring Adina Menzel. Yeah, I just got to let it go. Yeah. Oh, sorry, that took me a minute. Okay. Yeah, if you start listening to Pod Against the Machine, get a, you'll get a lot of that. <laughs> Johnny is a kindred spirit. I was going to yes. say, we can't get you two in the same space. I think that would be a disaster. Or really fun. For fun I'm going to go... For I'm just going to go down in publication order. So for me, the first one that's on my bucket list for first for APs is Legacy of Fire, and um, I'm just going to read it here real quick. Long ago, two warring armies of genies fought on the slopes of the Pale Mountain. The world shook under the power of their wishcraft. Today, the armies are weakening are wakening, and one potent Efriti warlord is ready to pick up where he left off, unless the PCs can stop him. The legacy of a of fire adventure path takes the heroes to all corners of the desert land of Katapesh and beyond, with journeys to strange demiplanes and even the fabled city of brass, home of genies and beings of living fire. So, legacy of fire is your thousand and one arabian nights themed adventure mm-hmm. but one of the things that i really 
really like about this one is that the antagonist of the story is super relatable because it's a tragic romance. The story is basically a tragic romance that it's not something that's done very often in adventures. Usually it's like, you know, the power hungry megalomaniac or something like that, you know, or some curse that was caused by some power hungry megalomaniac or, you know, (laughs) yeah, for sure. Yeah, it's something, or they're looking for a jewel because they're a power hungry megalomaniac. But no, this one is just um, it's it's a tragic romance. Like I'm not I'm I'm, I'm not going to spoil the reasoning or what happens behind it. I mean, I did spoil the reasoning, but I'm not going to spoil like what the machinations that the antagonist does and goes through. But the reasoning behind it is they do it out of love and affection for someone or something. And it, it was always, a, it's a very interesting twist. And it's something that's I was really drawn to when I was reading it. And something that I I still hope to at some point um, run. It, I was actually planning on running it after Jewel of the Indigo Isles for the podcast. But then the dwarf ap dropped and i'm like okay hold on pause let's dwarf daddy's got to get his work dwarf on so yeah that's a t-shirt right there Mm -hmm. get your dwarf on dwarf daddy that'd be cool does legacy (laughs) of fire then draw you more into the like gray area of good and evil if the main antagonist is sympathetic that's something I would play I would definitely play it that way or at least relatable maybe not maybe not Not sympathetic sympathetic. relatable but they're still they're still they're still evil right you know what I mean Mm kind of like Magneto it's like yeah he's still a he's still a bad guy right but you can just you just you understand why Mm -hmm. but it's like dude you, you can't go about doing it this way still doing bad stuff yeah yeah That'd be cool. What's next, Jeff? So next is one that I have. <laughs> there's a theme. I had started playing in it in a play by post and it eventually died. But War for the Crown is one that I've only not, I've listened to a bit of adventurous from No Direction play theirs because I was farther along in that. But it's one that my first character death in a TTRPG came in, and so I could think this is a game that, like, I, I feel like I've I've now been committed to that story, and I would love to see it resolved at some point. But just the uh, as a talker, I am I would like to see a how well the social intrigue kind of plays out over a, a longer game. And that just appeals to me. It just, you know, you're in Taldor, this empire that used to be the bee's knees and now is not so much. They're like the bee's angles, as they say. And it just, I don't know. There's a lot, there's a lot to it just from what I got started. And it's like, oh man, uh, I, I would like to see that one all the way through. Yeah, it's it's very um, Caesar gets killed by Brutus, and you, the empire is 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 in turmoil. It's like, what the fuck happens now? Like Caesar's been killed, you know, and 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 the and the PCs or who are part of these noble houses are like, what? And so it's 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 a side that you never really have to deal with. But yeah, yeah it's it's really cool. What levels was that? This it's just, this is a one through. Yeah, what is it? Is it is it twenty or is it? Let me look it up. It's probably sixteen one or through, seventeen. Yeah, yeah. I'm not sure what. I'm not sure how you end. This is a full AP. 
Right. Mm-hmm. I keep forgetting that AP means starting at beginner and going through. Yeah, that'd be crazy to have to stay focused on political intrigue the entire time. Uh, have that be what everything's centering around. Whole different mindset. Yeah, and I'm really curious as to what the... um. Because you know how Paizo loves to put in like mini games, mm-hmm. what the mini game would be for War for the Crown. I'm I still I still don't quite know. I'm listening to a podcast that just they just got through chapter two of book one for of War for the Crown. So so they're really early on, and I still don't know what the mini game is. I'm not sure if they're even going to bother doing it. So, yeah, for me, the next one is Strange Aeons. This is this is your Lovecraft, your cosmic horror AP. In the distant land populated by an alien menace from beyond the stars, a great cancer grows from within the earth. As its tendrils reach out, through the dreams of those who learn and study its existence, a sinister cult grows more active in preparing the way for the devastation that will destroy more than its minds of would-be heroes. Can the adventurers reclaim lost memories in time to stop the advance of a cataclysmic contagion that could threaten all of Galarian? Can they resist the mind-shattering truths revealed by the yellow sign and the monstrous forces it symbolizes? This is, yeah, this is your Lovecraft cosmic horror. This is Call of Cthulhu in Pathfinder. Yeah, same. I, you know, I've caught the first however much. Maybe, I don't even think I finished all book one listening to GCP do theirs and sing a couple of their shows live which was fun but uh i've played a few delta green one shots and then we're doing a side one shot of call of cthulhu seventh edition and so it's one of those things where like it's uncomfortable to me because it's like oh it's so weird and crazy but like also pretty cool and it'd be yeah you could find someone to run that for both of us. That'd be pretty cool. Yeah, for sure. That's something that I would. And I um, maybe we'll wait another year for the Kraken Ancestry to come out because they they announced that the Kraken's gonna might potentially come out next year in Year of Monsters, and I can play a human sized walking Cthulhu in Maybe. Strange Aeons. Bet you could recruit Cynthia. Phenomenal. <laughs> right? right? Yeah, probably. Yeah, this is this is one I've wanted to play for a while. So and I know that I think as Alex Giordano is actually running it for some folks mm-hmm. in the pod in the podcast circles. I think he might be running it for Corey, if I'm not mistaken. Hmm. But yeah. Our our Corey from our show. Mm-hmm. Not not Corey from dubious knowledge there's there's so many Corys now you can't really hear the wire of the eye when it's spoken it's it's awful yeah you got you got another one because i got one more go for it those were those are really my top 20s so take it away oh yeah yeah i guess that that, that is my top those are my two top 20s because i have a my last one's a second edition one. Oh yeah if we're jumping to 2e i've got I have uh, I have two. Okay. <laughs> One I think you've already played in some, and this is going to sound wild, but I started playing this in a play-by-post and it fell apart. Okay. <laughs> Weird. Can't imagine, but Stream QSF, Stream. Quest for the Frozen Flame. Oh, yeah. Man, that was one, too, that really feels like monster parts would fit in. but uh, it, it fits in well. But, yeah, I, I started playing this... Uh, half work bard and was really we'd just gotten into that kind of hex crawl portion of it and just collapsed. I don't even know if we made it to level two. Uh, but uh, it's just another cool hey, you're in the frozen tundra, you know, with the realm of the mammoth lords and 
you know, I guess I did make it level two. Yeah, because I just started a free archetype and I was I was getting ready to work my way up towards being a mammoth lord someday. And it was so going to be awesome. You just started the hex crawl, though. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. And uh, it just, I love that idea. So I don't, I either barely put in effort or I go all in. And I had looked up a dictionary of one of the Inuit tribes English to like back and forth so that I could try and translate some terms and like got my character's name from because I was really trying to get in the mind so like this is fascinating uh, I'm up here in like the snow people let's go and then the game fizzled out <laughs> this is yeah this is it's a it's a good one it's a good one for me and we've mentioned his name a few times in the in tonight's episode uh, one that uh, Casey and I have talked about potentially trying to convince Rachel to play to run for to us run at you. some point yeah. is Outlaws of Alkenstar yeah we've um, this is one that this is your steampunk weird west adventure like it's it's your yeah it's your wild west steampunk tombstone meets uh wild wild west type adventure and it just sounds so flipping cool yeah gunslinging outlaws greasy alleyways wine soaked saloons you're in the city of smog which is a steampunk city yeah it just yeah. sounds so cool i uh i i jumped in for a handful of sessions of that game uh finder of paths and stars friend of all podcasts made by Paizo fish uh solid dude he's running it for one of my one of my best buds and i literally came in at the very end of book one <laughs> So I was like, what's going on? Um, but it was just, man, it was, I, I loved it. If I wasn't a super old man and could handle like back to back late nights, I would never, uh, I would <laughs> never have left that game, but it was just, it was, uh, it's really cool. I hope you get to play in it. Yeah. That's, that's one I, 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 I want to play at some point. That was our runner up to abomination vaults which is what we ended up running in that group but it does sound which, so cool i'm not i'm not i'm not mad that we're playing abomination no. vaults yeah. abomination vaults is awesome i'm not mad at all but yeah outlaws of alkenstar is the other one had we if we were playing outlaws of alkenstar abomination vaults would be on this list right true <laughs> true so i love the mega dungeon yeah and dungeons are my favorite thing to GM, so it's my comfort zone. So and and you're, 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 do, you're doing a heck of a job, so. Mm, thank you. What's the last one, Jeff, before we before we wrap it up here? Uh, it, it only half counts because you've already mentioned it as yours, but the Sky King's Tomb coming soon, the Dwarf AP <sighs> for 2E, man. It was funny because... Jason and I were in a bunch of different uh, Discord servers together, and so many people, when that news dropped, were just adding this guy. Like, oh man, it's a dwarf AP, it's happening! And I, I was just a minute too late. I think Ellie beat me to it on one of the servers. And I was like, oh man, yeah. I Corey, Corey pinged me in one server. <laughs> Ellie pinged me in another server. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's like the dwarf AP finally got came out. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm jazzed about that. I would love to uh, play in that or run that uh, and hear. Just, I would love to be at the same table as you because of how <laughs> excited you'd, you're going to be. You're going to just you're just going to be so giddy the whole time. It's going to be great. Uh, yeah, it's but, it's going to be a good time. Yeah, I love dwarves, man. I love dwarves, and I love that. I just love the idea. <laughs> of this adventure of them going to reclaim their, like this city that means so much to them. 
and that has been like run over by orcs and other nasties and just like the, these heroic dwarves are going in to just reclaim this they're, they're this this fabled city that means so much to them and it's like so that ugh, it sounds so like I don't know so dwarf mm-hmm. I mean right that's literally Tolkien land right they go back try to reclaim Moria and get it goes really well yeah uh, yeah that's I think the ending of that mm-hmm. they all live happily ever after same, same with a lonely mountain mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah. yeah Super well, I, dwarf. Now I would need to make an Oaken Shield character for that game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> what class would that be? Mahogany Shield. Oh, I thought you meant a character based off of Thorin. Oh no, yeah, no. I was thinking of the name, <laughs> but a cha- a champion. Yeah, I yeah, I could see champion, but not not a paladin. No, no. I think he would. I think he'd be. A liberator. Yeah. Liberator. <laughs> Remind me which alignment is that? Chaotic good. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, I think it'd be a liber he'd be a liberator. Thorin would be a liberator. Well, um, there's our next bl- mutiny. Breakdown of all the dwarfs. What class are each of them? Thalen, Thalen, Fuffum, Fuffum, Biff, Buff. Feely Keely. I just offended so many people, um, but I'm tired. Biff or Bomber. <laughs> Buff or Bomber. Well, and then we've got the, you know, pronunciation variations, so. Right. Sorry. Gimli, I... son of Gloim. No, I love it. My uh, my mini schnauzer is named Gimli. We're Tolkien fans in this house. Oh, yeah. Very nice. Sweet. Well, anything else? I guess the only other one would be Way of the Wicked. Is a third party first edition evil or first edition Pathfinder evil adventure that I've always wanted to run. You get to and play evil characters? You get to play evil characters. Ooh. And it's a one to 20 campaign where you play lawful evil characters. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. So um, that's another one that I, I was had had tossed around the idea of. If we ever get to a Patreon goal where we're making enough money that we could actually hire somebody to do the editing for me mm-hmm. so I don't have to do it anymore and I could just focus on GMing and I could run a second show, I would love to run an evil an evil show and yeah. either converting Way of the Wake at the second edition or, or converting the um, Hell's Vengeance uh, AP, which is a which is a f- Pathfinder First Edition AP, that's an evil campaign. To Second Edition would also be would be fun. But that's that's we need to get to a pay, uh, to a Patreon goal where we could hire people to hire somebody to actually do the editing for me. I mean, the Wu Tang sponsorship is going to go a long way. That's yeah, true. that's true. That's true. Rizza, hit me up. I will before we bounce the just to jump to Starfinder to say that to defy the dragon. Yes. Adventure, Power Rangers, Max, Starfinder. I mean, come on. <laughs> yes, that 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 is that that one sounds awesome, but the one Starfinder adventure that I would want to run, I would want to play in is Redshift Rally. Mm-hmm. It's cannonball run in space. It just sounds so cool. And Adam ran that for their live stream and it was they did, he did a phenomenal job. So, yeah. All right. We good to go? Yeah, seems like a good place to end it. All right. Well, thanks for joining us, Jeff. Yeah, thanks for having me. You want to sign us off? Rachel? This has been Mutiny. I don't remember what we say at the sign-off. I don't either. <laughs> this is this is y'all's show. <laughs> All right, bye. The party never ends. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> bye. Bye. <laughs>